This is the Ken Carson one, where he talks about the first time performing for Playboy Cardi, where like Cardi apparently signed him after three songs, before three songs actually. So that's crazy because I'm trying to figure out, is it because Ken Carson was so hard, pause, or is it because Cardi is so good at developing artists and co-signing people that like he can make literally a rabbit famous? Like I'm sure if he got a pet rabbit, there would be fan pages of this fucking rabbit and it would have 100K followers. Every single video would get 10 million views. Not actually 10 mil, but you get the point. Um, so after or before three songs, he was like, yeah, this is the one. Because I feel like Ken Carson, again, no disrespect here. I'm just talking objectively. His music before Teen X, like to me, it was all right. Again, underdeveloped. So maybe Cardi just knew how, like knew the raw energy and then just was able to pull it out of him. Pause again. Jesus Christ. I used to be in like everybody's studio sessions, like from Future to Young Thug to fucking. That's crazy. I saw Ken in like a really early Candy Paint music video. Like one of uh, Lewis posted it and he was just in the background. He had like a little fro. Actually, I think it was like a, what's it called? Like a, a flat top type joint. Or maybe it was just a, like a small fro before he was able to make it locks or braids. But he was really tapped in. If he was Young Thug, Future, he was cool with 808 Mafia. Like, he was bound to blow up at some point. Lil Yachty to Cardi. It's like, it's endless, but it's like, I've been on the music scene since I was like 13, 14 years old. So Just before I even. So maybe Cardi, maybe, maybe Cardi picked like a, a safe choice with Ken. He's like, oh, this dude's going to get picked up by thug or future who already have pretty good cosigns i feel like thug's cosign is actually better because ysl and like he pulled late little baby out of the hood he signed gunna and gunna's blowing up or has blown up already so he just like he just swooped in before the label could other labels could take him because like look what he said in uh, i think it was punk monk he said the label tricked him about pierre born pierre signed to interscope he was trying to sign Trippy before they knew about Trippy. So he's like, nah, I need to get somebody before everybody else tries to sign him. And like, I was deciding, like, do I want to rap or make beats? Like, but then my swag was just so crazy. I'm like, I can't make no beats, man. They got to see this shit. I ain't going to say no names, but somebody motherfucking lit fireworks under the engineer. What? Yeah, that was crazy. What does that mean? Yeah, he all right. They lit fire, fireworks under him, though. That's the craziest shit I've ever seen. Like, 808 Mafia, Lil 88 is in the back. That's Tim 88's nephew. And that's Southside's nephew. That's how I... And that's how I met Cardi, right? Like, got into, like, everything. I was on the phone with a girl, and, like, he was on the other end. I'm like, who the fuck is that? Like, it was him. And I was, I was watching 808 Mafia videos, like... While we we're on the phone, and he like, that's my uncle, and I'm like, no, it's not. But then he like, we were young as fuck, so he was like, blunt as fuck. He just put him on the phone. <laughs> Yo, do y'all see this little smudge right here? I'm trying to figure out if that's my screen or like when I was moving, I dented my monitor. Y'all see this little thing right here, or is that their camera? And I was like, Yo, I'm trying to come over there and work. I don't know what I was trying to work on, but I was trying to come over there and work, no matter what it what it was like. I just needed to get around and then I'd find my niche and then you like evolve after a while. Now I'm here. Me and him were like the youngest in every room we were in. So it's like a super advantage, a super advantage. Atlanta definitely saved me. I also feel like when you're young, you can basically, I, I'm, I'm a supporter of the concept that if you do anything long enough, you'll become good at it. That's why when people are rappers or like YouTubers or whatever, I'm like, yo, do this shit for three to five years and you'll blow up. 
Like there's no questions about it, like 90%. But a lot of people quit after a while. So if you start really young at like 13, by the time you're 18, you're going to be a superstar. And look what happened. So shout anywhere out, else. Shout out Wake and Ryan. Probably would have been a, a like not as much help. Because I was like seeing people make like the greatest songs and shit. So I'm like damn near knowing how to do it. Just so And then yeah, if if you're around people who are like I used to work for this YouTuber who had like three million subscribers on a bunch of different channels and I was helping manage them. And like not that I grew that fast, but I was able to like know how to do titles and thumbnails and edit videos, just watching. And so if you're if you're a young rapper around like Thug and Future, you're like you got the you got the Krabby Patty secret formula. Of like watching, that's how I learn. Like once I watch someone do something, I damn near know how to do it myself. Yeah, like I'm not like the the trap music, but it's like I feel like I got it like a song that you could be like this is trap music, but like I feel like I'm more versatile. And no, nah, I don't think just being around future thug like that that's not an industry plan an industry plan to me like cosigns is not necessarily an industry plan an industry plan to me is if you get signed to a label and you literally have like zero followers or a thousand let's say and they just start pumping a whole bunch of money into you actually if you sign to a label and they're not even really pushing you all too much and you blow up organically like really slowly over a period of three four years maybe even less if you're doing it on your own and even if you're signed to a label and you get your own traction that's not an industry plan i just feel like there were specific examples in the soundcloud era like jumex and others where literally like the first music video that they dropped it was like overproduced like it looked like they were fucking taylor swift in the music video they had extras they had a scene paid for that probably costed like 10k at least it's like where'd you get that money bro it's like a it's like bill gates like even if bill gates son i don't even know if he has a son if bill gates son became a rapper when it was actually hard or maybe not even hard like he could he probably has the resources to pay for a songwriter producers whatever he could probably make a hit song or a, you know a decent song just by like hiring the right people that would be an industry plan oh then the average trap artist all of ken's videos are overproduced yes i get what you're saying he was rapping prior to cardi i mean there is an argument to be made because he did blow up after the cardi co-sign but he did have connections like organically with his friend lil 88 and thug and future like he was in the studio but like it's not like they were paying him to do anything he was just a friend or like the little bro not to little bro him, but he was the little bro in the studio. So I don't know. I mean, it's up to y'all. Cause, cause yeah, the Cardi cosign did exponentially grow his career. Like I'm making melodic shit. I'm making rock shit, EDM, whatever I feel like for today. I mean, nobody might hear it, but like I'm literally making everything. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Cause it's like, it's super evolving right now. Like it's not just trap. You got a lot of motherfuckers that's from Atlanta, like the list is endless. Like you could probably tell me some people from Atlanta that I didn't even know was from Atlanta. I'm gonna use Future for example. Atlanta is its own dimension, bro. Like Future got albums and mixtapes where it's like, I don't feel like nobody outside of Atlanta heard it cause it was like gas station CDs back then. And like, you just go to the gas station and get a fucking mixtape. It's not that easy anymore. Well, it's easier, but like, in Atlanta at the time is like that was a great time but that's Atlanta though bro like like I just told you like his uncles are like south side of TM88 they're like my uncles I do feel like Atlanta is another world though I went once with my girl I was staying by that like really fancy mall on her ex her company's expense I was just chilling at their hotel I didn't pay for that Are you kidding me I got an OnlyFans girl who's making 300K. Nah, I'm joking. But yeah, even at the airport, I don't know. Somebody recognized me. I was like, damn, this really is a music city because I never get, I, I rarely get recognized. And as soon as I hit the airport, I'm like, what the fuck? Soon now, because it's like, I've been around so long. 
But everything in Atlanta is like, everybody's somebody in Atlanta. Like, whether you're a bum or you're rich, like, everybody's somebody. So, like, nobody underestimates anyone. Like, that's dope, though. I, I like that. In Miami, literally no one pays you any mind unless you, you got bottles at the table and, like, just got hella bread. And then even, I, I don't know. It's just like, that's why I live here, though. It's like motivation to make more money and be like, fuck all you guys. I'm I'm the top G here. Anyone could be next from Atlanta. Like, you just got to work. I'm not going to lie. Cardi breakout moment. Okay, I'm, I'm glad that his first sentence had Cardi in it. I'm not trying to disrespect him. But come on, come on, come on. He told me he wanted to sign me before I was even like on my third song. <laughs> I played him like one song and like showed him my Instagram and he was like, bro, I want to sign you. And I just like was around him ever since. The struggle in Atlanta was being different like at the time because it was like, bro, Atlanta is so fucking, I feel like it's so one way. Like, Would I say Ken is evolving musically? We'll see. I mean, we know that his new era of, like, he already did it, kind of, which was, like, the lower voice shit as opposed to the super auto-tune. I feel like it was already done, though, kind of by, like, Future. So I think he needs to find his next sound because everybody kind of, like, got onto the Rage Wave, and he was one of the earliest people on it with, like, the electronic noises, EDM type infused music. So we'll see. We'll see. He got a great chaos coming out, and that's apparently what, like a grunge album? We'll see. It could be dope. Artists like me, Lonely, and Cardi is like, we're like ventured off. Like, some people probably don't even know we're from Atlanta. But it's like, it's like a different vibe. Like, Atlanta usually takes the most, like, trap artists and, like, just give them the most power, whether it's like, the best or the worst. They just like, whoever they're fucking with, like, whoever's from down the street, you feel me? I used to be in the studio with Southside and TM88 every day, every day, literally, like. So they're making, they're making all type of beats. They're making beats for everybody. So like, I'm hearing shit. At one point, I would just wake up and like, just play beats and like, just make songs in my head just to be like, do I really know how to do this? This is before I even got to a microphone, like. TM88 could like tell someone like I was standing at his house every morning. I'm in the basement, just like ear, phone to my ear. I'm not even having any headphones in. I'm just like walking around, pacing. I might be pacing for hours just listening to beats. It's definitely like a yeah. I feel like you can't really make a song or know if it sounds good until you put it in the DAW, like to put all the effects on it and shit, because. I mean, otherwise, it's just a freestyle and nobody really cares too much about freestyles. Like, can you structure a song the right way? You don't necessarily have to write it beforehand, but yeah, like a song takes a little bit more work than the freestyle. So I get what he's saying. Like, sometimes I get on here and I'm like, do I even know how to, do I even know how to like speak legibly where people understand me? Or is that just in my head? The music thing is like, Definitely, like, who works on it the hardest, bro? Because it's, like... Freestyle 2 isn't really a freestyle, though. What freestyle means with a lot of these songs is, like, it has no hook. But, like, a freestyle, in essence, is just, like, one take. Or at least that's what I used to think it was. Like, when you go on an interview or, like, a talk show or a radio station, like, a freestyle is, like, you're just off the top. Or maybe you have, like, some bars in your head, but you just... Like, what Juice World does... But freestyle went like in a recorded song is like no hook. When you like don't, when you just passionate about it, you just want to make music. The songs just end up being hard. Like you don't even like too much focus on like which way you're going. Or freestyle is writing a not writing a song. I believe that's called punching in. Cause like if you if you. Say you, you like think about the bars before you're saying it, like what Biggie and like Lil, not even Lil Wayne, like Biggie did. I feel like that's in it in a, in a way, or even Jay Z, in a way that's writing a song and that's not a freestyle, right? Like you didn't write it down, but you 
you wrote it down in your head. Like you can picture the words in a way, or at least that's how my brain thinks. Or anything like you let the people choose. I disagree. It's kind of easy because I was closer. So like, I would see things like, like, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Or like, I would do that. You got to take it and put it in your own, like, your own way. You got to make your own path with it. So I, like, learned mistakes before I made them myself, you feel me? I seen others make the mistakes before I could have the chance to. Uh, Don't underestimate someone, bro. Because, like, it's people who will estimate their, underestimate their best friends, like, not thinking that. They'll like not even shoot past them, but like just be as good. And when that person finally gets their way, and when they finally get the will to drive, bro, it gets scary. So it's like they remember everything, like how you treated them. So just treat everybody like appropriate because anyone could be someone. True. Yeah, I definitely fuck with Pink Panthers, but like. He's like, I definitely fuck with her, but like, she low key trash. She's not. She's not. I'm just saying what he's saying. Whatever. Like, like I said, I make everything, so I'm not like focused on one thing. It's actually easier because like lately I've been working with like 070 Shake, Shake West, and like. No, I don't think Pink, Pink Panther S is trash. I was just like. Just bullshitting. He probably doesn't think she's bad. I think he probably collab with her at some point. Like she's got a cool style. It's almost like techno in a way. A lot of motherfuckers who like I just see myself working with, and it sounds pretty good. So, but it's not like anybody you would see me like ideally like. Work. I feel like at this point, like when when we were at Summer Smash. I don't know if Ken and Lone performed. I don't think they did, but I heard that basically there were a bunch of artists who were like chilling backstage. Like I talked to a bunch of them and they were kind of like open access where you, you know, they were cool. They were just chilling with everybody else who was backstage. But like when Cardi and Uzi showed up, they blocked all access to wherever, like he pulled up in the Escalade or whatever he was driving in they made a path where like no one was able to interview him unless it was nardwar or, or you had like clearance to do so and you had permission so uzi and cardi like no one saw and that's how you never see pictures of them or at least cardi because they cut off all media access you are not allowed to see him now i heard that when ken and lone are at concerts like festivals like that the same thing goes down and that's, I think that's another p part of why Cardi's cosign is working because he makes them move or they probably do it too. Like they want it. Like they move exactly like he does, like a superstar where like no one has access to them. They're like basically gods at this point. You're not, a, you're not allowed to talk to them. They are too famous for everybody else. So as I was saying with this, like the, the cosigns, like, I don't know if they would even collab with other like uh, regular rappers because like they're already moving like the superstars. So they they have to venture off into different genres to perpetuate this superstar status where they're going to do shit like different than the regular rapper route. Work with like my fans probably wouldn't imagine a song with me and 070 Shake. But it's crazy. Every day, me around any artist, bro, I'll just, like, every with everybody, I'll just, like, take the back seat and try and learn everything instead of, like, just being a, a hard head, like, just trying to take the wheel all the time. Sometimes you just got to sit back and observe so that you can learn, literally, like, just say fuck everything. A lot of people let their egos get in the way. You got to know when to turn that shit off, bro. It depends where I'm at. Like, I feel like about. You wish you were famous. I mean, I don't know what it's like to be famous, but I, from what I've seen, I feel like it's fucking annoying.
because when you're like a Ken or alone or even some of these rappers who are backstage and they're a little bit more open access like i was talking about before which ken and lone are not like literally i saw it you walk in a room and literally everybody like goes over there with their phone like trying to get content with you like suck the clout off you pause literally like you cannot have a regular conversation everybody has a motive Everybody is just trying to dick ride and be your friend. Like I hear the conversations. People are like, oh yeah, I need to like befriend such and such so I can get to such and such, but like next to him. And like, everybody's like just trying to navigate this little networking shit. And I'm like, damn, I hate this so much. I'm glad that I'm a streamer and I don't do interviews and I don't do any of that shit. Cause it's just, it's just, I would, I would hate that. I hate cloud chasing. It's crazy. I was touring in America. I would definitely be still recording. So you can't have genuine relationships, is what I'm saying. You don't know who is real and who's not. If you're famous, and because I know where the studios are, at. I know my favorite studios. Uh, traveling is is a lot. I feel like it gets in the way of my like working process because facts. Fucking hate traveling. I was in Chicago for like five days. I was like, I cannot wait to get home. I like my setup. I just feel comfortable here. I feel like I'm never gonna go fly anywhere else to do any sort of like festival. Cause I, not that I had that bad of a time. Cause I appreciate Cole for letting me come to Summer Smash, but like, it's just the whole process of flying. I had two flights cancel. I had to take a frontier flight and not that it's that bad, but man, I was like in a seat with no screen in front of me. It's just, not that that's bad either, but I like Wi-Fi on my flights so I can work. Ugh. I work a lot, so it's like when I'm not working, I oh. feel like I'm losing. Like when I'm not making songs. Sergeant Burns said I should interview rappers. See, I would. And I do get offered to interview rappers from, from labels, but I just, it's not worth the bag to me. Because cause if I do an interview then it almost is seen as like a cosign and i don't want to be giving cosigns to people i don't really listen to like that you know like money is money don't get me wrong and i like to take the check too but anybody who i really want to interview they're not going to be doing interviews because they're too rare like that you know what i mean like anybody who wants to interview with me they're above me so i don't really offer any sort of benefit like they would only benefit me and I know that. And that's why I'm like, I don't even ask. Cause like, wh what am I <laughs> like? That's just dick eating at that point. I'm like dying to make a song, bro. Like I'll even hit my manager. Like, bro, I haven't made a song in three days. Like get me in the studio right now. Because I'm like, so I still treat it like day one. Like you can't lose that feeling. Like I think my tour is on this European tour is on like a week and a half long. And I'm like dying already. It's been like three, four days. Especially not being able to cook food. Yeah, I would hate touring. That's why when I start like really getting into the behind the scenes of managing artists and having a label and shit, I'm not, I'm not going to go on r the road with rappers. I'll like meet you at one stop or something, but nah, I ain't, I ain't sitting on a tour bus, like eating literally chicken fingers every single day from McDonald's or nuggets. Like, I'll, I'll start shitting my brains out. My body's not even used to sugar at this point. I'm not going to lie. I've been asleep and been woken up like, yo, you got to go on stage. So it's like, the stage is my playground. I know what the, I know what the people want and I know what I want. So I feel like me and the people got to understand it with me being on stage. Like, whoever's in front of me, they already know what they come in to do. See by yourself, bro. I can sound like whatever in life. You could never hear it, and I probably love it. But it's like with someone, it's like you like damn near trying to be like peak self at all times. But that's why I like working with people, cause like if somebody and yeah, I know this interview is kind of like dead right now. I'm waiting for that Cardi part. I think he already said it though. So I don't know. Maybe we'll just finish it. And we're going to listen to the Uzi snippets. We're going to listen to the Sofago snippets. We're going to listen to the Yeet snippets. Don't worry. I got y'all. It's good. They're like pushing me to be better. 
and I believe everyone I work with is like great. Like if my girl's in the studio, I'm not saying the same shit. Definitely, bro. That's what like, this is from. I might say a bar and look around like. I just. Like who said that? I fuck this bitch's ass in the butt. It's like, what? That's like when I'm on stream talking to y'all about some, you know, some dime pieces we saw, and I'm like, that's why I keep the door closed so nobody can hear it. Like, like, <laughs> like I literally have to tell her though. Like that's probably the only person who like. I'm like watching myself when I'm recording. Like, oh, I love my girl. She's so fine. As soon as she leaves, man, I fuck three girls at the same time. Other than that, I think my mom could come in there. I'm saying anything. For real. That's weird. I can't even cuss in front of my mom. I don't really try to listen to her opinion like that because she's like, I'm like, mom, it's like not for you. So like, but she loves it though. Sad. I don't know if I would do it from a different name, but I definitely been like trying to tap into sad music. But I'm not a super emotional person, so it's like very hard. Like I salute everyone who made the sad music because it's like you walked up to the mic and <laughs> you just like poured your heart out. Like that's the craziest thing ever. Yeah, like picture you you were there when you like seeing your favorite song being made. That happened to me a couple times. I always say it was like featuring your thug. Like, I ain't gonna say the song, but like, shit was crazy. Like, usually when you watch somebody make some shit that's super hard, that shit not coming out. So it's like, don't get your hopes too up. Like, he know right here, like, 99% of music doesn't come out. Like, I'm working it every day. You think you're gonna get a song every day? Nah. With that one, like Leaks. I never, I never got that one, like down to like knowing like why that's a thing. But it's a lot of songs where it's like in the studio, you like, damn, this shit crazy. Maybe five days later, you like, yeah, I'm glad I didn't post that shit. Facts, bro. Facts, and that's the thing. Like with me, it's always really random. That's why I just make everything for my fans, so they can just choose whatever they like. Really just like the clothes, like I'm into clothes a lot, so it's like that's it really with the Ken shit. And my name is also Kenneth. My real name is Kenyatta, but everybody called oh. me Ken, so like it like went right along. What oh my god. It's like no shit your name your nickname's Ken. Your name is Kenyatta. I'm not even gonna lie, I don't know about this year. But I'm definitely working. Like Perfect timing is a motherfucker. So I just want to, I'm going to be ready when the time comes. 100%. El Dizzy, don't worry. We're going to the next subject in three minutes. Three I'll minutes. I'll be ready. I'm always ready. But perfect timing, like I said. I mean, yeah, we make songs all the time. So it's like, we could put out one today, tomorrow, next week, next year, whenever. Like, we already got probably like two, three hundred songs just together so it's like it's crazy and it sounds crazy already we still waiting on that collab tape though i want to see i want to see ken on the next project pass loan we need to keep going like this like destroy lonely hit 29k ken needs to hit 32 loan needs to get 35 i mean i doubt that it's going to happen i feel like 29 is going to be such like a hard thing to pass Especially with, I feel like Ken makes a little bit more niche music, especially when he's doing a great chaos, which is grunge. And like, I don't know if like rap caviar is going to be putting grunge music on, on their playlist. I'm sorry. It's just a fact. I mean, it, honestly, it might happen and I could be wrong. It might be like a more mainstream sound, but like grunge in general, it's grunge for a reason. Like that in itself, that word means like, you know, it's not palatable to the average human being. Like, we so here. Like, I feel like I listen to him, he listen to me. If he don't like some, or if I don't like some, we like changing it or like, we come to an agreement on everything. 
we were friends before we made music, so it's like. So the, maybe that's how Cardi found Lone. Ken is low key the A and R. He should get a finder's fee for Lone. I told y'all already. Ken is is a huge proponent of why Opium blew up and is still great to this day because Ken was so successful as Cardi's first artist. And now let's see if he got the finder's fee. He's like Trippy Red and Six Nine. He's getting like five percent of them royalties just for for giving Cardi the sauce. The music shit is just like a plus. I've created music with Lone and like like we'll be together probably the, the whole fucking week, and it's like we probably be making shit or we probably not with somebody other than somebody else where who I don't know as much. Probably don't bond with as much as like I make songs with you, but it's like I can't like we're not we don't have the same interests like that. But it's not it's not a bad thing though. It's just like these are my friends from before I even like made a song. So it's like like he's been making songs for bro, like he's been rapping. So yeah, Zagon Slay said his dad was a big feature on like Ludacris's song. So yeah, I get that Lone was already, he already had industry connections, but that doesn't necessarily mean that like his dad necessarily helped him. You know what I mean? Like just cause your dad is a, a was it, I mean, one song doesn't really make you that plugged in the industry. Like I'm sure I'm trying to figure out like a rap, like say, say block boy JB, he had a huge song with Drake, right? But that doesn't mean that his son He's gonna like plug in the industry and then he's gonna be so successful. You know what I mean? Like just one song does not make it like, it, like if Drake had a son, he does have a son. If Drake has a son and he starts rapping, then that's bit, like he can already give him all the plugs. Like can get on the features of Future, like for free. Every single big rapper can get Cardi, can get anybody. Just be like, yo, I'll give you a feature if you hop on my son's song. It's like LeBron, LeBron, when his son gets in the NBA, he's gonna play with him for like a couple years, so he gets drafted, and then he's gonna dip. What is that called when uh, nepotism? Been like a long time. Like I've seen, I seen him like go. It makes crazy. the biggest difference in the world. Tell me, please, tell me, a son of a rapper who is a famous rapper. Is Young Thug's son? Is he a big rapper? Future son? Is he a big rapper? Drake's. I mean, I know they're young at this point, but like Lil Wayne's son, Jay-Z's son, any of them, Shaggy and Rob Banks, Rob Banks ain't even like that famous. I mean, like he's big, don't get me wrong. They have a 50x better chance. Maybe, but I feel like nowadays people don't really care about that. Like. Like big artists are made because they're cool, not because of their, like they're always gonna be plagued with, oh, he's this guy's son. Like I'm pretty sure P Diddy, P Diddy, P Diddy tried to get his son to rap or his son wanted to rap and they put like a whole budget behind the music video, put it on World Star, I'm pretty sure, or Revolt. That shit flopped, where is his son? And Diddy is a billionaire, bro. He got all the resources in the world and the son ain't doing shit. And if Diddy can't do it, then come on. He, he watched me go crazy So it's like Hand in hand uh, Young Thug not being in jail Yup 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 That's a that's a, that's a a tough one Name them as a superhero And their superpower Oh I want to hear this mm. Lone is like Flash like. I thought he was going to say Batman What the fuck he can make a song fast as hell. What's called? But I feel like we all like Flash, so I don't know. I don't know. It's like we are the Avengers, I guess. And you could put I feel like I would give the fans the option to like put who's who. I don't wanna say so. Damn. I wanted him to say like like is there a superhero that goes invisible? There definitely is. I just can't. I, I feel like they're not really that famous, like that that uh, superhero. Like that's Cardi, or maybe somebody who can like just 
disappear instantly. Maybe not go invisible, but like, you know, teleport or something. That's Cardi. Spider-Man. Ken is like, <laughs> Ken is Goomba. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, Miles Morales. That's just Spider-Man, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the Spice Girls. So I don't know. I'm not. Why they ask him Who that? Who are the Spice Girls? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm wrong. Oh, all right. Cool, cool, cool. You got the Spice Girls and you got, I know Saw and Pepper. Probably. I never heard any of their music, so. Deja was my favorite thing about singing with Deja. All right. All right. You know, I feel like Ken didn't do bad, but like they just, I don't know. The interview was a little bit like slow in a way, but Ken's cool. Fuck with Ken. You already know it.